Eh, muy buenos días a todos. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor to open the hearing of the 179, the 179 uh, period of sessions of the commission that uh, whose title is the a lack of protection of the right to water and the impact on rural person and indigenous in Chile. This uh, hearing was requested by several organizations, including Movimiento Defensa del Agua, La Terra y la Protección del Ambiente, Mujeres en Resistencia de la Lanza Territorial y Mapuche. I would like to thank the civil society, civil society organizations and the state for being here today with us. Before beginning, I would like to explain the methodology. We will have a first round of 20 minutes. I will give the floor for 20 minutes to the civil society. And after that, I will give the floor to the state for 20 minutes so that the commission can make the comments and the questions regarding the case. In the second round, we will have the comments of civil society organizations. They will have 12 minutes, and then we will make the closure by the commissioners. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcón. I'm the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Today with me are Commissioner Joel Hernandez, that is a country reporter, and the vice president Flavia Copiovesan and Commissioner Estuardo Rallón. Also, the acting executive secretary of the commission, Maria Claudia Pulido, is here with us today. I would like also to let you know that for those who are following us on the different social media, that we have side out subtitles and we have simultaneous interpretation. I would request each of the persons that they introduce themselves when they take the floor and we will uh, ask them to mute yourselves when you are speaking and to keep your cameras on. And we have a timer uh, today. So please uh, re, uh, follow the time restrictions. And also I, I was informed that Soledad Garcia, that is the special rapporteur for uh, economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights is here today. I would like now to give the floor to the civil society organizations for 20 minutes. Thank you, Commissioner. Honorable Commissioner, I'm Andrea Pietra Fresa. Uh, I'm on be here on behalf of CEGIL and Camilo Mancillo, that is uh, from Modatima, and uh, Auto Alonso is also here, and also Miguel from the Mujeres en Resistencia de Alianza Territorial Mapuche, ATM, and Manuel Arroyo from Modatima, ATM. And we will be taking the floor in that order. The Inter-American Commission, uh, the Inter-American Court has said that the right to water is included in Inter-American Commission. So every person should have access to drinking water in an um, uh, affordable way. Uh, the uh, water should be treated as a social and cultural good and not as an economic good. But this uh, is not the reality of thousands of Chileans. The lack of the protection of the right to water is uh, present in the regulations of the Chilean government that regulates it as a private good. Usually the right to water is exploited by companies for commercial ends and there is not enough quantities to guarantee human consumption. The consequences of that a lack of protection are enormous. There are communities without access to drinking water. The state provides trucks of water and they have to buy the water to the private sector. Many water sources are polluted. The lack of access to water also creates uh, violations of the right to life and integrity and the right to a health or, or a health environment. This also affects children and rural communities and indigenous communities that for which uh, or for whom water has also an important role for their traditions and religion. In other countries, uh, as well as in Chile, human rights defenders and environmental defenders suffer most of the threats 
the pandemic has shown the consequences of the overexploitation of natural resources and the impact on the current climate crisis. The exploitation of natural resources occurs in Chile as a state response to leave behind the global crisis. The reports and our complaints are not new. They were able to hear them in, during their in local visit in 2020. Now they will be able to listen to our reports and our complaints, and they will listen and learn about the impacts on our uh, communities. Also, they will listen to the voices of people that are living and suffering the threats and the harassment every day. We hope that we can contribute uh, to the information uh, collected by the Commission during its in loco visit in Chile. As my colleague said, there is a framework that prioritizes the use uh, or the commercial use of water above human consumption. This is after a regulation that was sanctioned in 1980 by Augusto Pinochet and the Code of Water of 1981. So there we have the rights of use of water. And this is in the constitution and the holders of the right cannot be deprived of that right. This includes that water is considered an economic good and is a uh, used freely by companies and other organizations. Now the state of Chile needs to buy water to provide water supply to the communities that do not have access to that resource. This is ridiculous, but it is what is happening. The market management in Chile uh, leads to a situation in which 18 communities do not have access to drinking water and 40% of the rural populations has no access to water sources. Most of the basins in the country are being exploit, exploited by the companies and usually the companies use more water, more water than that that is available. And we see also that there is water exploitation. And for example, we have the Cholo River and the La Ligua River that have a situation of exploitation. We also see that we have citizens or are in charge of providing drinking water to rural areas and they have their own committees, but those committees have seen there have been interruptions to the water supply of thousands of people. Also, Chilean law uh, separates the right to land from the right to water, so they can access water without being the owners of the land. And this affects the traditions of rural peasant and indigenous communities. This model leads to speculation, monopolies, and the uh, benefits for productive sectors instead of the community. And uh, with the skills of the development of the country, there is a limitation of the access to water for these communities. Miguel, si puedes seguir, por favor. Miguel, would you able to take the floor? Perfecto. Hello, Mari Mari Compuche, Mari Mari Puguenim, Lee Balut, Rachita Ulmo. Buenos días. Good morning. Bueno, hago parte yo de un movimiento que hemos denominado aquí en Guaymapo, movement Mapuche, Alianza Territorial that we have called eh, and Como Alianza Territorial Mapuche, Mapuche, es la tercera oportunidad uh, que concurrimos a ustedes en los últimos 10 años. Primero, por la vulneración de the los derechos years. de la infancia Mapuche. First, we came y to you because hace dos años, por la activación y la criminalización de los derechos 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 de los para denunciar la afectación okay. de nuestros derechos territoriales como pueblo, territory donde el agua es parte sustancial de aquel derecho territorial por derecho colectivo. El concepto de agua para nosotros como Mapuche 
water Furaz, as, as Mapuche people simbólico. has a symbolic no se puede meaning de la Mapu, and cannot be understand Por ello, uh, afirmamos que nuestra lucha, without a connection nuestra lucha to the land, de los últimos 30 años to earth, y seguirá siendo una lucha por la biodiversidad, por el equilibrio ecológico, uh, por los right. ecosistemas y toda la forma de vida existente, right a lo cual nosotros denominamos nitrofilmonien. Así, eh, el agua tiene ecosystems. un significado espiritual, como decía, Water y has an spiritual ello se ve y se refleja um, en la infinidad de topónimos, en la infinidad meaning, de nombres de lugares que está presente so el agua en todo el territorio Mapuche. And water is present in all the territory of Así nosotros ejemplificamos the Mapuche people. En dos elementos clave la vulneración al derecho del agua and al we would like to show two elements to explain Uno, the violation of the right to water la invasión forestal First, de monocultivo de pino y eucalipto presente prácticamente en toda la región mapuche donde dos empresas forestales concentran prácticamente tres millones de hectáreas that concentrate three million of hectares mientras que el pueblo mapuche forestal mirinco forestal arauco are the names of those companies a las 700, While the hectáreas. Mapuche people only have, uh, y en segundo has, lugar, como ejemplo, have tenemos 700,000 hectares to work. And Mapuche. we see that there are also Sobre landfills. And uh, uh, we have, acá, for example, de the landfill of Moriaki, Aquí Morieco de Temuco, near Temuco. More than 34 communities Durante are affected by polluted water because of that landfill. That landfill received 500 decía, tons of rubbish hoy, every day. No con agua and rural. those communities do not años, have drinking water after 25 years of acá, documents, reports, um, Por lo tanto, esos son processes. De la so that del is agua a concrete or a specific example nacional. of gracias, the violation Chau. of the right to water. Thank you very much. Now I will be reading the statement in the sacrifice zones. Um, human rights are being violated. Um, rights of living in a healthy environment free from uh, pollution due to massive uh, intoxication suffering in 2018 in the Supreme Court of Chile did not stated that if these episodes were repeated the company should be stopped but they dictated the transfer of the miners to a safe zone we do not still know who were responsible for the intoxication and in the pandemic emergency, environmental emergency episodes occur affecting the population, causing uh, pulmonary diseases that are caused by the uh, pollution from the companies in the area. In that respect, the Institute of Human Rights in a 2018 reports regarding massive intoxication indicated that 30% of the region does not have drinking water and 9% in the region do, do have access to drink, drinking water. In 2018, there was a report regarding uh, carbon contamination of the water. The consumption of water of the um, population has different types of pollution, and there is uh, high levels of heavy metals in the water. This makes it impossible for this water to be uh, useful for drinking or irrigation. The reports uh, presented by different universities from Canada and Russia indicate that the presence of heavy metal in the water is unacceptable. This affects the crops and the exposure of high metals in the, in the area. Um, so that the um, exposure to miners are, uh, may cause cancer in the population. The National Environmental Agency has shown the lack of capacity to protect the uh, standards to be complied with. As an example, we have quality uh, standards. This collective wants that these standards are established by the Ministry of Health, taking into account the parameters um, suggested by the World Health Organization. 
policies should be published in, within four months as the rules established. We want children's uh, safe and healthy, pure water and air. The case of the province is another example. The uh, drought in the uh, in the region uh, indicates that there is a decrease in 80% of the uh, precipitation deficit affecting most rivers and um, most basins and uh, wells are dry. However, every year they still um, extend the plantation of avocado that have increased exponentially in the last year. The expansion and the intensity of monocultures has been uh, carried out in a short period together with geographical condition has caused the deficit of water. This has caused, uh, this has led to the exploitation of a very deep well, uh, 200 meters deep with an investment um, cost of $177 per meter and the populations cannot sustain the um, family agriculture that is mainly carried out by women. 30% of women are in charge of their homes, which has been translated in an increase of the traditional uh, change in family roles. There is an increase in the lack of basic services since 2015 to 2017. This is of great concern as these communities that lack uh, services uh, suffer uh, in different aspects regarding their education, gender equality, which affects um, women, girls, adolescents, and the elderly. In the rural world, eight out of 10 uh, persons collecting water are women. There is no access uh, to drinking water and this uh, hinders progress and development. There is a key role played by women in terms of water and natural resources. They carry the weight of providing water to their communities and their families. Women are still the oppressed gender regarding access and management of water do not have an advocacy in uh, decision-making processes uh, when discussions are being led by women, by men. In the case of uh, women in reproductive age and adolescents, they are affected in connection with their sexual health, which limits their hygiene um, conditions. They lack water to guarantee sanitation. There are communities that receive um, 50 or 100 li uh, liters of water. These territories have precarious livelihoods, resources, and rural communities have been affected the most. The shortage is deepened due to the uncertainty and inconsistency in the way and continuity of the supply and the lack of guarantees regarding the quality of the water they receive in consequence the communities in the region that are deprived of this element are in a situation of risk of irreparable damage to the rights to life integrity health and water access due to this situation more than 10 years ago women and men uprised and made visible um, this situation to protect the water for our communities and territories to defend life through different mechanisms to protect human rights. But today, threats against are on us. The human rights defenders have received anonymous threats without investigations, without any trials. We are subject to the interest of the uh, uh, police surveillance as it has been proved in the Pakolic scandal amidst the uh, uprising in 2019 and the different bills fostered by the Chilean government uh, promoting mining activities 
And during the pandemic, these are going to interfere in our private life and they are uh, legalizing the uh, purchase of uh, armament to repress protests. They are not taking into account the consequences of the neoliberal system that oppresses us. In our communities, COVID-19 is still affecting communities that do not have enough water in this pandemic. You have heard Without the, there is legislation that does not protect access to water. This uh, allows companies to acquire uh, in a private way water creating inequality regarding access to this resource affecting the communities throughout the country, in particular women, indigenous peoples. And at the same time, the threats and criminalization is more frequent. This is of great concern as there is no protocol for the investigation of threats or violence against defenders and no comprehensive policies or mechanisms to provide a response to the uh, situations suffered by the populations. Civil society and water defenders, we are concerned about the lack of clear information about who has access to uh, water in um, Chile. That's why we consider it is important for the Commission to call on the attention the state uh, regarding providing information about uh, water in order to have a systematized access to information. To conclude, we want to request respectfully to this commission to call on Chile to develop regulatory um, measures complying with international standards, taking into account that water is a public, uh, of public use and not private use, guaranteeing the uh, water for the population. We want the Commission to clarify the scope of international protection of human rights uh, to water, access to water. And through the Special Rapporteurship on social, social, Economic, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, we want to carry out an analysis together with the civil organizations to clarify the duties of the state to guarantee that water is uh, accessible, that is pure, and to guarantee uh, human rights. Also, we want you to request information to the state regarding threats or any kind of violence uh, exercised against human rights defenders. At the same time, uh, request information about protocols, mechanisms for the protection of these persons. As we consider that this information will be deficient, we request the Commission to present a technical note to the state, including the standards that the Inter-American system has developed for the compliance uh, uh, and development of a comprehensive policy for the protection of human rights defenders. The Commission is working on recommendations on the in loco visit that occurred in 2020 regarding the social uprising. We want the guarantee of uh, rights to water and access to natural resources. The answers yet. Thank you. Thank you for the civil society for the presentation. You talked um, over one minute. I will now give the floor to the state. Good morning. The delegation of Chile thanks the presentation of the first vice president of the, commis of the commission, Julissa Mantilla. I would like to congratulate her for uh, her election as first vice president. And taking it to, I would like to thank also the comments and observations made by the petitioner in this hearing. We would like to show our serious commitment to the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and to the protection of human rights and to the compliance with international uh, uh, standards and obligations taken by the state. We also recognize the fundamental work done by the Commission of Human Rights uh, through thematic hearings and reports. And environment of dialogue and non-confrontation should be promoted. 
as we said before the OAS in the meeting, meeting held between the countries of Aladi plus Mexico, the Chilean state requested a change in the name of the hearing in order not to prejudge regarding the topic or the matter of this me uh, meeting. Chile has tried to guarantee access to water by addressing the problems related to this resource, especially for rural communities through a legal framework and public institutions that work together. Uh, for that, we uh, include in this delegation people from different agencies. We have the general director of water, Oscar Christe. He will talk about the regulations and the legal framework for the access to water in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Then the risk management unit of the Ministry of Interior Christian Barra will talk about the measures to address the situation of water deficit in Chile. Then Fernando Victor, that is the legal consultant of the Ministry of the Interior, will talk about the measures taken by the state regarding the access to water and the right of, to access to water. We also have a member of the CONADI in order, and he will talk about the programs to strengthen the access to water and development programs. I would like to give the floor first to the General Director of Water, Oscar Christie. Thank you very much. Honorable Commission, Chile is one of the most uh, affected countries by the climate emergency. And you know that this is a global problem. Our country is suffering a water emergency. In 2019, the crisis was at its worst level because we had the worst drought in 100 years. In la last year, we saw a 10 to 15 percent reduction of the flood of the rivers, and the impact has been very serious. Populations that have their own systems of water supply 20 years ago are facing a crisis that is accelerating. The scientific projections uh, for this are even worse. The reductions of water supply in Chile will be around 25 to 50 percent. The state acknowledges that we need to provide a solution to the water issue, especially for rural areas through a legal framework. We also had the barriers of the pandemic and the state has conducted efforts to adopt specific measures in the short and long term to address the effects of this climate emergency in order to guarantee access to water for citizens and also to ensure the water supply for population, especially rural and indigenous communities that are the most affected by this situation. Honorable Commission, according to the Chilean legislation, water is a national good of public use. The area that has the jurisdiction for the establishment of policies for the supply of water is the Ministry of Public Works, together with the Minister of Health and the General Direction of Waters and the uh, Office of uh, Rural Services. They work together and make all the efforts to guarantee water supply to the population. Regarding the administration of water resources, according to the legislation of the first title of the second book of the Water Code, together with other supplementary legislation, the Office of uh, Water uh, manages the uh, supply of water and establishes mechanisms to preserve the water supply. It also determines the availability of the resource, and this includes the minimal uh, ecological flow, and also the identification of the underground water levels. The state considers that it's necessary to say that the current regulations and the measures adopted by the state to face this crisis comply with the Inter-American standards 
uh, according to international law. It must be said that the right to water is not recognized as such in the Inter-American agreements to which Chile is a party. The state of Chile makes all the efforts possible to guarantee the right to life, to integrity, to uh, non-discrimination and to food. And this includes the need to guarantee the access to drinking water for human consumption. After saying, uh, after what the commission said in the chapter 4A of its annual report of 2015, uh, the access to water has a specific uh, impacts for indigenous peoples and their individual rights and the use of their human, natural resources and their territories. And specific measures have been taken for that. Regarding the distribution of drinking water in Chile, we need to say that the supply for human consumption uh, is managed by uh, sanitation companies, which are regulated by the superintendency of uh, resources. And these services are provided by the ABR that are systems that are autonomous and they provide water supply to rural communities and they are under the supervision of the Ministry of Public Works. And then we have the Office of Water Works that is in charge of getting the investment for the systems. Also the direction or the Office of Water uh, Works together with the Office for Rural Areas Works, they work together in order to guarantee the correct functioning of these systems. Rural population in Chile accounts for 2.4 million people and 71% is covered under the Rural Drinking Water Program of the Ministry of Public Works. So we have 2,000 community organizations that administer the infrastructure, the tanks, and the uh, grids of distribution of drinking water. This includes uh, private and individual companies as well as public agencies. In the context of the water emergency, in spite of the efforts made, many communities, especially in the regions of Olao and Coquimbo, have seen a reduction in water supply and they may not have permanent access to water supply and municipalities need to guarantee the human consumption of water to their population in order to cover the basic needs of their population. And this is done through trucks or water trucks. Now I would like to give the floor to the risk management area to Christian Barra. You're, 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 you're on mute, Mr. Barra, please. Thank you. Taking into consideration what has been said before, there are some seconds. Should be activated in order to overcome this catastrophe. The Ministry of the Interior of Public Security uh, through its program and through the, uh, the resources that it has through its budget allocation, has the funds to be able to provide an answer to the water deficit that affects the different communities. They hire uh, water trucks in order to give an urgent response together with other public services in order to guarantee water supply. These uh, funds, are aimed at providing the institutions with funds so that they can face emergency situations that can occur at any time. And this is what tends, this tends to happen when there is an earthquake, there is a volcanic eruption or a fire among other phenomena. The use of these funds is exceptional. And these funds should be used when there is no other source of financing. And this is something that is uh, under the supervision of the General Office of the Republic for budget. Uh, through one of its decrees from August the 17th, 
of 2018, there was a regulation or a measure to regulate the distribution of these funds to guarantee the distribution of water supply through water tanks. The purchase of water tanks that should be managed by the municipalities and third, the uh, coverage of the cost of fuel uh, that municipalities have. Also, we have also uh, water storage tanks in order, and also we have a coverage for the emergency costs. The water deficits accounts for 30% of the annual amount of money that is spent uh, for emergencies in our country every year. The Undersecretary of the Interior established that we need to uh, have more resources for each family for their water supply. They should be have covered 50 liters every day. That is, that is according to international standards of humanitarian aid. That uh, amount of water per person is only for emergency situations when the situation cannot be addressed by the municipalities. But that is not the total amount of water for the population. It's the financial aid for the municipalities who are in charge and responsible for the regular water supply when there is a deficit in water supply. In order to determine the quota of 50 liters of water per day, per person, we took into consideration the standards prepared by the WHO. According to the organization, 50 liters of water are necessary per person per day to cover basic needs and to avoid health issues. The minimum amount of water is 25 liters in order to maintain or to keep life. And these not, does, this amount does not cover hygiene and all the consumption needs. And in conflict situations, the minimum amount is of five or 10 liters per person because there is not water available for all the uses that are required. And that's why we are trying to guarantee the 50 liters per person every day according to the standards of the specific standards of the WHO in order to guarantee personal hygiene, food, and uh, health issues in order to prevent any health issues or diseases, especially regarding these emergency situations uh, that affect people because of the water deficit. Now I would like to give the floor to Ignacio Margit, that is a member of the CONADI. Good morning, commissioners and members of the government of Chile. In order to provide an, a response to the water crisis, there's a PIBE plan to identify and uh, take care of the population affected by water deficiency um, or any other natural catastrophe so as to focus the response to, of the state to the families. Unlike other emergencies, water deficiency is not unexpected. It has a constant evolution with long-term mechanisms that affects the most vulnerable situation, uh, population, such as the elderly, pregnant women, persons with disabilities, children, and infants. Most uh, families uh, with water deficiency are in vulnerable situation. 40% of the um, national uh, housing survey. There's an emergency uh, plan uh, that has been developed for water deficiency at the national level. That is a new tool that the state has developed to deal with the needs of the households. PIME um, identifies those families, identifies families at the local level and compiles uh, information about the use of water and the different needs of the families as well as how water is being collected and other technical information uh, in order to organize the supply of resources for the affected families in order to guarantee the supply of water. 
in order to deal with this problem in the indigenous persons, they are subsidized in order to develop different um, works in order to guarantee irrigation. There is a um, national subsidy to provide different award solutions to this deficit. The law regarding indigenous peoples says that in terms of water shortage, we are able to finance different works in order to guarantee access to this resource, to provide solutions to water shortage and a program that provides uh, subsidies for indigenous peoples to contribute and guarantee access to water for those uh, indigenous peoples or families through the regularization and uh, of water rights. Through this program, we are subsiding the regulation of water and uh, rights to um, use the water, to guarantee a quota of water for uh, the use of the families as well as the farming sector to guarantee the quality of indigenous peoples. There has been a um, process in order to guarantee 5,000 liters of water uh, per minute with a $10 million um, investment to guarantee access to water since 1994. And we have achieved the regularization of 40, 14,000 liters per minute with an investment. The investment that has been allocated for this resource, we have developed different irrigation system since 2010 and 2020. They has been an investment of $83 million to finance different projects um, to benefit 15,000 hectares in Atacama, Chopagasta, and different regions, Araucanía and Magallanes. Additionally, in 2019, Conavi established 12 agreements with municipalities uh, all over the country in order to transfer $18 million for the construction of irrigation uh, systems for the indigenous uh, peoples, which are being implemented. In 2020, three agreements of transference have been signed with the CNR for $27 million for irrigation systems all over the country. In the case of the agreement with the Comisión Nacional de Riego, this benefits different uh, communities in the use of our uh, irrigation systems, different projects to improve uh, the irrigation of the Rio Llama and the construction of irrigation systems on demand according to the different competitions of the uh, institutions. There are also um, different constructions in order to enable 800 wells to benefit uh, communities, indigenous communities, uh, also the elderly. Um, finally, Taking into account the agreement with the forces, the implementation of a thousand solutions regarding irrigation um, systems, these will be carried on demand within the framework of the agreement. Within the possible solutions for particular users and communities, we consider the following constructions of manual wells, pumps, cisterns, tanks, Thanks to uh, gather, uh, collect uh, rainwater, also um, storage of water, um, different systems of irrigations, uh, tanks to recover water, and different um, construction works that we carry out. Now we'll now give the floor. I'm sorry, uh, just to tell you that your time is out. If you continue, then the minutes will be taken from the second round. 
So the state continues now. We agree, okay. Um, taking into account the time, I will give the floor to Mr. Fernando Gibson from the Secretary of the Interior. Thank you, Oscar. Good afternoon. Regarding the situation of the persons, we can say that Chile is solid regarding the protection of fundamental rights. We have a, an autonomous Ministry of the Interior to investigate um, any incidents, independent tribunals to guarantee those rights Taking into account the petition of this hearing, this situation has been investigated by competent um, organizations and we have followed the uh, mechanisms in order to follow up these events. The detail of these proceedings will be explained in separate uh, reports that will be sent after this hearing. Thank you. Okay, so the state representation has concluded. So in order to organize ourselves in the second round, civil society will have 11 minutes and the state will have 10 minutes. Thank you for your participation. Now we will start the, the participation of the commissioners. I will now give the floor of Commissioner uh, Hernandez. Thank you, Madam Press. I would like to greet the authorities of the state and also civil society organizations. I would like to thank the petitioner organizations for bringing this issue to the table. This is a uh, issue that concerns the whole world, but it's also a, a topic or an issue that is of concern for the population of Chile. Uh, last year, during our in local visit, uh, my colleagues uh, were in Chile at that time. I visited Valparaíso, and in Valparaíso, we received uh, statements from mothers and from their children that were requesting access to water. It was a very moving meeting. We listened to the statements regarding the urgency that they have regarding equal access to water. I would like to make five comments after what I heard. One, the human right to water, then the legal framework of uh, Chile, then the equal access to water. The fourth is right to information and five, the right to defend rights. I would like to start with the human right to water. Regardless of what my colleagues would say regarding the case law in the area by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, I would like to mention the resolution 64 slash 292 of the General Assembly of the United Nations that is titled the Human Rights to Water and Sanitation. It is a resolution that was adopted by 120 votes in favor and no votes against and 41 abstentions. Its first paragraph, that is the first one, uh, says that the General Assembly of the United Nations acknowledges the right to drinking water and sanitation. Is This is a, an essential human right for the full enjoyment of life and all human rights. What we see, is that at least there is a new regulation in the area of international law. With the practices of the states, this is consolidated as a general principle. And why is it important to talk about the human right to water? Because if it's a human right, there are two obligations uh, on the side of the state. One is to protect the right, and second, to guarantee the enjoyment and the exercise of that right. And in that regard, I think that the international community will advance on in order to recognize the right to water. We know that Chile is facing a water emergency without precedence, but we also know that big Chile 
or Chile is victim of the climate change and that they are facing a huge challenge to supply enough water of quality to its population. It is very interesting to understand which the legal framework is now in order to protect and guarantee of a new right to water. And I see that there are two different positions here and I would like to have a better explanations in order to understand your standing. You are saying that it's an economic good and there is no legal obligation to set priorities or to prioritize human consumption. But at the same time, we listen to the state that says that legally it is a good of public use or a national good of public use. So I would like to know how the resources being a distributor, is it, uh, if it's a national good of public use, is it distributed through concessions? And if that is the case, what is the system of concessions that you use? Because organizations are telling us that there is a demand of water for human consumption. And that is opposite to the access to water of, of the access to water of extractive and farming and mining companies. The fourth topic has to do with the right to information or to access to information. And something that has been mentioned here is fundamental. That is the access to information regarding the concessions, concessions for the use of water. Due to its own nature, I don't know the legislation in this area, but the Inter-American Standards uh, say that uh, people should have access to information such as that regarding concessions. And that is something that everybody should have access to. And this is very important uh, for on the general population to know how water is being distributed. The point number five has to do with the right to defend the right to water. Uh, here, uh, some uh, organizations mention God, harassment and threats and violence acts and we would like to have more details regarding the existing protocols to prevent threats and harassment to human rights defenders. And we would like to know if there are protocols to guarantee or to provide protection if those threats become real. And to conclude, I would like to say that the petition presented by the civil society organization has been very interesting that the commission carries out a thematic report regarding the scope of the right to water. We have the special rapporteur of economic, social, cultural, and uh, environmental rights that can explain this better, but this is a challenge that the humankind is facing and all our states will in the content will have this challenge that is equal access to water. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to ask the second Vice President, Flavia Pedestan, if you have any questions or comments. Thank you, President. I have two questions. First, I would like to agree uh, to uh, talk about the importance of this hearing and how important the contributions made by civil society organizations and by the state are. I agree with my colleague, uh, Commissioner Joel. We need more information. On the one side, we have uh, water as a public service, but there is also a system of privatization we have companies that use water services. And apart from the general resolution of the General Assembly of the United Nations, I recall that the Inter-American Corpus Jury, after the case of 
indigenous communities in Nuestra Tierra against Argentina, uh, February the 16th, 2020. There is an explicit protection of the right to water. So in the Inter-American Corpus Jury, we have this protection uh, related to Article 26 that have to do with the obligations of the states according to Article 1.1, .1, Paragraph 1. So I would like to know how the system of privatization works. We have the recognition of water as a public good, but at the same time, we have the industrial interests, uh, whether they are companies or because water is a business, there is an economic interest. Uh, privatization occurs because of financial interests and that weakens the right to water as a fundamental right to survive that has an impact on the right to health, to life, to integrity, to work. So we have a paradox here. I don't understand how the right to water can be privatized. I would like to have more information taken into consideration the Inter-American standard that is very clear. And we need to understand the differentiated impact on rural peasant and indigenous peoples. This is uh, in on the name of this hearing. And also I would like to take into consideration the situation of women and girls because they even suffer a bigger burden. That would be my first question. Uh, I can't recall my participation in the public hearing of 2019. And an important uh, thing to say is that the state within its legal obligations needs to adopt all the measures in order to adopt violations of human rights by third parties. And we have also this issue, we have this sacrifice zones, we have uh, the problem of environmental degradation, of environmental justice, and this uh, violates the right to water, to health, to life of their communities. So in my second question, I would like to know the measures adopted by the state, the measures adopted between 2019 and the present. And I would like to talk about companies and human rights. I would like to know the measures regarding the duty to respect rights. We have the report of the Special Rapporteurship on Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights. The commission presented this report in 2019 regarding the American standards, human rights, and companies. The companies have the duty to respect human rights. So I would like to know the mechanisms to oversight and to guarantee accountability. So those are my two questions. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Estordo Rolón. I don't know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet my colleagues. I also would like to greet uh, civil society organizations and the representatives of the state. I would like to apologize because I joined the meeting a few minutes later, but as Commissioner Joel Hernandez was saying, I wrote down uh, the suggestion that the commission could prepare a thematic report on this issue. I think that that is something that would be very valuable. And I second uh, the commissioner's uh, comments regarding this. And the other topic was already addressed by Commissioner Piovesan that has to do with companies and human rights. A question that I have is whether there are uh, private companies are taking advantage of the current legislation 
to have access to water services. And I would like to know which policy of oversight of control policies are there in order to guarantee uh, rights. Uh, the state was saying that there is a water emergency without precedence in Chile. And I would like to know if that made the state redouble or double the efforts of oversight. These efforts should be done within the framework of the law and within the res or res by respecting human rights. Thank you very much. Before giving the floor to the special rapporteur, I would like to make some brief comments. All the things that have been mentioned today need to be understood in relation to the pandemic. One of the most important recommendations is to wash your hands and have access to water. So we have a specific situation of a pandemic and we need to recall the resolution 120 of the Inter-American Commission that has an intersectional and differentiated approach for this topic. And apart from what my colleagues have said in the Inter-American system and in the universal system, there are regulations. And we have this basic principle of non-discrimination and the concessions uh, and in the investigations and the protocols need to have a differentiated perspective. We are talking here about indigenous people and rural communities and women and girls. So we need also to understand what is happening with the older persons or maybe if they are migrants that enter the country. And that is my comment. I would like to give the floor now to the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia. Thank you. President of the hearing, Vice President of the Commission. I want to greet all the participating organizations, the State of Chile. Thank you for all the information. This is a very relevant hearing for the mandate of the Special Rapporteurship. There have been important participations from the different commissioners I want to highlight that as a special rapporteur, to be part of such a, uh, a committed commission regarding the right to water. There are many things I wanted to mention. You already mentioned them. I want to repeat in connection with the acknowledgement what the rapporteur of the country has mentioned, the UN. This is great consensus globally, but in the inter-American system and within the commission, we have registered the importance of the right to water. For example, in the report 2015, chapter 4A, we may reference in particular to uh, the human right to regarding access to water, even before the jurisprudence of the uh, inter-American system express itself regarding the autonomy of uh, Article 26, as Commissioner Piovesan mentioned, regarding the recent rescission um, in connection with the case of an indigenous community in Argentina. And Article 26 and the Charter of the America of the OAS we want to express that we understand the right regarding access to water, especially during the pandemic, as Julissa has mentioned. Carrying out a report like this one will depend on the available resources, but there are strategic lines of the mandate and there's a priority for the second period that has started some months ago, has to do with the uh, epidemiologic emergency, this health crisis, as the state and the civil society has mentioned, is related to the enjoyment of the right to water. So this um, topic is in the agenda of the mandate in a consolidated way. I want to take the opportunity to 
express that in our report on companies and human rights that Commissioner Piovesan and Commissioner Rallon mentioned, we have also put some emphasis on the, how the privatization and the decisions made uh, by the states should respect and guarantee um, human rights with due diligence. I want to highlight the importance of the report for the Chilean state as the commissioner of the rapporteur of the country uh, regarding the local visit mentioned I was able to participate we received many important and valuable testimonies about the importance of this uh, situation for the Chilean people we are uh, available for you I have some questions after this summary, first of all, I would like to know if there is statistical information of public access regarding the impact that the business activities have mentioned monoculture, uh, energy, and electric uh, power as well, and the um, timber industry as well, um, the effects of regarding access to water in the Chilean population. And I could like to know if there has been progress regarding the um, process of laying down a new constitution in terms of water, access to water, and also the agreement that it's outside the Inter-American system, the commission and the special rapporteurship congratulate their uh, will uh, look forward for the ratification of the agreement in the region on April 22, the day of the Earth. That's an important date to remember this agreement. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I will now give the floor. I will now continue with the second round. We will start with the comments made by the society. Thank you, Commissioner. I am Mariana Noel. Leoni from the Sahil, and we will I will start. I want to highlight that the Chilean state hasn't said anything uh, regarding the uh, threats and the risks suffered by defenders and the lack of comprehensive policies and protection mechanisms. So we expect the state to answer this and answer the questions that were posed. I want to highlight the concern uh, that the state um, affirmed that right to water is not part of the policies as the commissioners have mentioned and the rapporteur. I would like to say that the Inter-American Court in the sentence establishes that right to water is protected by Article 26 of the American Convention. Chile is part of that. The American Convention has also recognized including that right to water is related to other human rights including included in the convention the um, Declaration of Human Rights mentions the uh, right to adequate uh, life. And also the committee has mentioned several times that this article includes access to water, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, Article 24 of the Convention of Elimination of Any Forms of uh, Violence Against Women, Article 14, uh, which Chile ratified mentions this uh, right. and. Also, Resolution 64, number two of the General Assembly of the UN 2010, that was mentioned by Commissioner Hernandez, and many resolutions of the Assembly of the OAS that have been adopted in 2012, that, uh, which mention access, uh, human rights and access to water. There is a statement from the state that right to water is not part of international uh, duties of uh, Chile is of great concern and that highlights the importance of this hearing, the participation of the Commission. I want to make reference uh, to the way in which the state justifies the fact that communities in Chile do not have access to water, drinking water for decades. The state understands that this is due to external causes, um, negative consequences of the climate change that affects us all and not to a situation uh, to which they have a direct responsibility. This is not correct. The cause of the uh, water deficiency and the shortage in Chile is exacerbated by climate change, but it's not only due to that. 
I would like to make reference to what has been established by the National Institute of Human Rights in Chile that has mentioned that the causes of shortage are unnatural due to drought and climate change and human as well, as they include the impact of industries in the area, the legislative framework in Chile that continues, and the lack of efficiency which the Agency of Water uh, monitors the water access. The National Institute of Human Rights concluded that shortage and the reasons include changes in the use of the soil due to agriculture, granting rights to um, extinguish basins, the exploitation of water over human consumption of water. Several uh, studies that we can give to the Commission reach the same conclusion. Diego Portales University establishes that the uh, right uh, to water creates um, great consequences. Although there's a responsibility to guarantee the necessary quantity of water for human consumption, the authority doesn't have the attributions to guarantee the use over others. So when there is a specific request regarding the resources, for example, uh, communities that need them for basic needs and industries that use them for ex economic exploitation, the market solves this through um, the um, power of the agency of water. So uh, the result is expropriation. The situation can only be corrected when the access to water has been affected. Many communities are lacking the water, but this article has not been implemented so far. Although if the asymmetric effect and the climate change was the only reason for the lack of water, the state is not taking any responsibility on the uh, causes of the impact in water in Chile and does not take effective measures. This uh, denial from the state to respect the Escazú um, agreement, to promote a healthy environment or promote a the use of uh, natural resources as a response after the pandemic. I would like to give the floor to my colleagues in Chile to mention uh, specific, the specifics. Good afternoon. As Oscar Disti has mentioned, climate change is a global phenomenon, but there are mechanisms that contribute as well. As we have mentioned at the beginning, granting rights to the exploitation of water is 80% in the territory. As our colleagues have mentioned, thousands of people are affected by the lack of water. And in 1997, there was uh, the establishment of the restriction of uh, water exploitation, but the use of under underground water uh, was supposed to be conformed, but it has not been carried out since. It's not regulated. At the same time, other mechanisms that could be used and other legislation, there's a lack of will and they have not been applied. So more than 60% of the patents for the use of water have not been paid and they have not been eliminated after three years. As Maria was mentioning regarding the application of Article 27, uh, on the rights of the access to water for the population in an emergency crisis have not been applied. There's a lack of transparency of information. So we need to know the number of rights that are included. The former uh, the director of the general director of the agency of water mentioned that they only know 60% of the uh, water supply in the country. So what's going on with the rest of the water regarding the questions um, in the legal framework, the Article 5 points out this is a public asset, but this is a legal paradox because the Constitution highlights that these uh, rights are going to be used as a private right instead of public one. So where is public water? Where is the power to make decisions regarding a public asset for all children? It does not exist because the loss of and the use of the water can only be uh, carried out by those who have the right over the water. So only the participation in the decision making is granted to the owners. So 
This shows that the concentration of the rights over the, the water will have um, a decision-making power of the decision. So in 2020, during the pandemic, facing the shortage with these water tax, they were reduced from 100 liters per person to 50 over what the um, WHO uh, recommends. I want to conclude now my participation. Thank you. Eh, bueno, por mi parte, Edgar, lo que veníamos señalando en la argumentación Thank inicial. Thank you. I would like to mention what we said at the very beginning regarding the, de, de interdependencia entre the interdependence eh, between land and, and the territory eh, of indigenous peoples in general, general and the relationship between our sentido, water and land eh, or the space of water, whatever, how you, y, whatever y you want to call it. Frontal, entre la there la perspectiva is here a conflict here regarding the Mapuche perspective of what for water and the uh, framework or the legal framework established by the uh, dictatorship, which has not been modified yet. Um, the state shows how they understand that separation or that division, water as a property, and they talk about the property. But the, 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 the uh, Mapuche population is also talking about the territories because we need to recover territories and we have been fighting for this from, uh, have been fighting for this for many years and now they are talking about this separation again they talk about tender subsidies purchases rights etc etc and they talk about money but who are we paying that money why do, there is no transparency regarding the business of trucks Y eso es una constante al interior de las comunidades mapuche. That is a problem that we have in the communities. Yo no quiero personalizar evidentemente que tenemos una discusión personal. I don't want to have a personal But we have here some things that is called musical chairs or something like that. De lo que el gobierno denomina para conflictuar, abordar el government perspectiva del De la criminalización y la is addressing the y, issue bueno, of the Mapuche a, people by criminalizing Mapuche leaders. And now we have to give explanations to the Boyeco. They are not talking about the problem of Boyeco. After 25 years and after all the rubbish that you live here, that you have left here in Temuco, near Temuco, we, we have 34 communities without water, and all the underground water is polluted. What have you done in those cases? So there is a paradox there. We are concerned because the different governments or the different administrations regarding territories of Mapuche and of indigenous communities, they are not able to make the, they are always making the distinction between water and land, but water cannot be understood without taking into consideration water or land, sorry. Uh, taking into consideration water defenders in Chile, there is no protocol for the complaint of the or the complaints of those cases. The uh, office of the public prosecutor is the one that is criminalizing defenders, or the police officers are the ones that criminalize the defenders. So we have the paradox. In Chile, there are some stages for the protection of water as an economic good, but there is no ombudsman per uh, office or ombudsperson office where people can go to have access to justice. There is no environmental uh, office where we can go to request the defense of our natural resources. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor to the state now. Thank you. I would like to start by uh, answering the first question regarding the system uh, or the legal framework for uh, water. As we said, Article uh, uh, 5 of the Code of Water says that water is a national good of public use. 
we need to distinguish water from the rights to use water. Uh, the legal system of Chile uh, uses the regulation for the granting of the water rights. This is uh, from 1979, and it's also present in all the codes of water in the history of Chile with some uh, changes. Then you are talking about the division or separation between land and water. And we need to talk about this. In Chile, 72% of water goes to farming. So 70% of uh, water is related to farming or agriculture. The other sectors that use water without land uh, are drinking uh, water systems, drinking water uh, systems in rural areas, also companies that use water have the right to water and they don't have right to land. So the idea of the division or separation allows for the water to be to move from one industry to, or from one sector to the other. And most of the water is used for farming and most of the farming is done by small farmers. And you're talking about the role of the state. The state is one of the owners of the right to water. So most uh, or over 30% of the rights to use water belong to the office of uh, water works for the construction of dams and other uh, works. Regarding the right or the human right to water and sanitation, we agree in that we are having a discussion regarding the code of water. We have uh, a gather uh, members from the legislative power and we have agreed that the code of water needs amendments and we need to make the right to consumption and right to sanitation explicit in the code of water. We also should include uh, the right to water to survive. And this goes beyond what we understand uh, as human consumption. It's a secure consumption that would allow for a family to survive in the different regions of the country. And this is part of the amendment that is being carried out or conducted for the code of water. Uh, now, the Code of Water established certain guidelines or measures, for example, Article 56, that authorizes any person to extract water or underground water. Also, there is also a, uh, the idea of uh, preserving water. Um, when there is a decision on a decision has to be made, we try to uh, guarantee a uh, water supply. But when there is uh, when there is the, when the water supply is guaranteed, we also have property rights on water, and there could be a reserve of water for human consumption in those cases for in when we are, have no water and where you have to see how you distribute water uh, we create a reserve for water uh, of water for human consumption so this uh, includes consultation rights and non-consultation rights. This is something that we will not have time to discuss. Article 7 says that the state can uh, use water only for human consumption. This was uh, 
uh, use in Petorca, and we did this to guarantee water supply to, uh, for rural communities. And this is called Plan Pedorca. And this uh, answers one of the questions regarding what has been done in recent years. In Pedorca, the Ministry of Public Works allowed the investment of thousands of dollars to guarantee the water supply systems. $14 uh, billion had already been invested. And we have the Plan Pedorca, and we have other regions that have their own plans or programs for water supply. The amendment of the code of water that is in process uh, reinforces the priority of human consumption, includes the concept of survival, also uh, widens the expropriation power of the state to guarantee human consumption, and also says that after the passing of the law, the use of water will not be indefinite as it is now. So, uh, having the right to use water doesn't mean that a person can do whatever they want. They have to comply with several regulations and they need to request a permit in order to exercise the right to use water. And regarding access to information, we have in our website a water observatory. And there you will be able to find the holder of the rights and these are included also in the record of property. You will be able to have the transactions of rights since 2005. You will be able to find uh, all the information regarding water resources and their use and their and its ownership. And everything is uh, classified by region. So you will uh, have answers to many of your questions. Um, the system needs to be updated or to be improved, and we are trying to improve the system, and we are all agreeing that the system needs those improvements. And then we have the oversight or the control of the state for illegal extraction of water. And they were questioning whether there were mechanisms to protect. And we have the writ of amparo or the decision of amparo. And that is a measure that is taken when a person feels that his or her right to water is being uh, violated. And that has immediate effects. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Cristian Barra and then to uh, Dr. Or Fernando Valley. Christian, you have the floor. Thank you. In order to clarify the situation regarding the role of the Ministry of Interior and the 50 liters per person, I would like to say that the Ministry of the Interior is not trying to provide a solution to the water to the water problem, but also we are just acting because we have a water emergency. When there is an earthquake or when we have a landslides, many people lose their homes and we have a lot of emergency neighborhoods. And in those emergency neighborhoods, we have emergency housing. And we need to see if those houses are uh, good houses, but we know they are not and they do not comply with the housing regulations that we have. And what we are trying to do here is to respond to an emergency. And for that emergency, we said the amount of 50 liters per person per day to solve the water supply issue in those emergencies. Today, uh, the Ministry of the Interior has 600 trucks every day that deliver 20 million liters of water across the country. And the regions that are suffering water scarcity are not the most affected now. The most affected uh, regions are those that do not have a water scarcity, but they have a lack of access to, the, to water. So those 50 liters are just an emergency measure. And we have had this discussion before the courts in Chile. You ha uh, there have been several 
appeals uh, at different stages or instant instances, this reach the Supreme Court of Justice. And the uh, enforcement or the application of this measure of 50 liters per day per person has been considered admitted or has been admitted or accepted by the Supreme Court. And there are other mechanisms to supplement in order to improve that level of water. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian, and thank you, Oscar. I would like to talk briefly regarding the cases mentioned by uh, regarding human rights defenders and environmental or water defenders. I would like to say that in Chile, we have independent court, uh, courts. Uh, we have autonomy in the, and independent um, uh, public prosecutor office. And those are in charge and deal with these cases. Honorable commission, uh, we will present a report to show you how those cases have been processed, those that have been mentioned in this hearing. But it's important to take into consideration that we are updating information. So the independent courts of justice, the uh, public prosecutor office, those are the ones that are responsible for those cases. So that is the answer of the state of Chile regarding these uh, specific situations. And we will be presenting this information in a report after today's hearing. Thank you. So we are reaching the end of today's hearing. Before closing, I would like to uh, mention that the executive secretariat is preparing the country report for Chile. I would like to say that the Inter-American Commission is paying a special attention to the request of the civil society organizations. We think that it's important to have this report, especially when it comes to economic, social, cultural, and environmental uh, rights. We will be providing standards and guidelines for states and for civil society organizations. I would like to thank all those who participated in today's hearing. I would like to thank the representatives of the states and also the representatives of civil society organizations. These dialogues are not always easy, but it's better to have a dialogue than not having it. I would like to thank uh, and my colleagues from the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights to the special rapporteur. Uh, she uh, has a very important leadership in this area. And I would like to thank the active executive secretary, Maria Claudia Polido, and the team of the Inter-American Commission. Even though they are not here, they are the ones that, uh, that uh, do most of this work. Uh, without these dialogues between civil society organizations and the government, it would be difficult to advance on Inter-American standards. I will close the hearing. Thank you very much and have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye.